When there's a lot of insulin in our body, our body is told to not burn fat. So when there's high insulin, there's no fat burning. In this video, Jesse in Chao Spei, a dynamic biochemist who's taken the world by storm as the glucose goddess, shows us her top five carb hacks to reduce glucose and insulin spikes, unlock more weight loss than a brutal 48 hour fast and feel incredible without starving, willpower, and without drastically changing your diet. Carb trick number one, lose weight faster with special food order. One of Jesse's core discoveries is almost too simple. The special order you eat your food with leads to 75% less glucose an insulin spike, and more fat burning time. So let's begin. Hack number one is eating your food in the right order. Scientific studies have shown us that if we eat the elements of a meal in a particular order, we can reduce the glucose spike of that meal by up to 75%. Now, why is it important to reduce glucose spikes? Because most of us have glucose spikes on a daily basis and we don't even know it. But these spikes are creating symptoms, fatigue, cravings for sugar and chocolate and cookies, not sleeping very well, inflammation, hormonal issues like PCOS or difficult menopause, every glucose spike also inches us closer and closer to developing type 2 diabetes. Essentially, if you want to feel better than you currently do, regulating your glucose levels is the place to start. It's like the foundation of the house of your health. If your glucose levels are spiking all the time, like most of ours are, you're just not going to feel good and you're not going to be able to go after the life that you want to go after. So glucose spikes reduction, super, super important. So this first hack, eating your food in the right order. So scientists discovered that if you eat the veggies first during the meal, then the proteins and the fats, and then the carbs, so, so the starches and the sugars, then you can reduce the glucose spike of your meal by up to 75%. So this is an easy place to start. Next time you're faced with a meal, if there's a clear separation between the elements in the meal, have the veggies first, then the meats and the fats, and then leave the carbs, like the rice, the pasta, the potatoes, the bread, and the dessert, obviously. Leave those for the end of the meal. And the reason this hack works is because veggies, when we eat them first, they create a powerful protective mesh in our intestine, thanks to all of the fiber they contain. This mesh then slows down how quickly glucose molecules from carbs coming later can make their way to your bloodstream. Easy one to start with. At home, this could be a side salad or steamed veggies before lunch and dinner. Out at restaurants, simply order a side salad and eat it first. You don't have to eat less food, you just armor your body with fiber before the carbs hit. Because the hacks are like gentle giants, or fairy godmothers, by just sprinkling them into your days and not changing anything else, you crave less sugar. Vegetables start becoming your friends. You feel great after your meals. You wake up with energy. You're no longer controlled by looking for a chocolate bar at 3 p.m. We also reduce how much insulin is present in the body. This allows us to burn more fat for fuel, to be more metabolically flexible, and it helps us just feel better and go about our day without thinking every two hours, what am I gonna eat next before I get too shaky? So in that sense, being able to burn fat is incredibly, incredibly helpful and important and healthy. Let's understand what glucose spikes are and how these carbs tricks burn more fat than a 48 hour fast glucose goddess explains that most of us have massive glucose spikes all day long. They push insulin hormone up and prevent us from using body fat stores as fuel. In response, your pancreas sends a hormone called insulin. And insulin stores glucose away into your liver, into your muscles, and then when those are full, insulin stores glucose away into your fat cells. And that's one of the ways that you gain fat on your body. It's in response to the spikes and your body trying to protect you from the spikes. Insulin itself has consequences and is the driver of type 2 diabetes and insulin resistance. When we talk about burning more fat than one heroic 48 hour fast, we're not talking about starving yourself. We're talking about spending more hours in a low insulin, fat burning state every single day without cutting carbs. I teach you things that are gonna help you flatten your glucose levels. So keep your blood sugar nice and steady. Now a few things happen when we keep our blood sugar nice and steady. Firstly, our cravings reduce. And that's because when we are on a glucose roller coaster, after every glucose spike, there is a glucose dip. And this dip 
activates the craving center in our brain that tells us to go find some cookies, some chocolate, some chips, and to eat them. So when we steady our glucose levels, those cravings diminish. Second, when we steady our glucose levels, our hunger reduces. That's because we're eating nice satiating protein in the morning, because our hunger hormones, ghrelin and leptin, are nice and steady and not doing crazy, crazy swings all the time. So we tend to be just less hungry generally, and we feel like we're less victims to all the food around us. So we can go for hours without eating, and this doesn't cause too much of an issue. And that's because of reason number three. So reason number three that steadying your glucose levels can often lead to weight loss is because when we steady our glucose levels, we are also reducing the amount of insulin in our body. Insulin is a hormone that gets sent out by our pancreas to grab any excess glucose during a glucose spike and store it away. And this is very good and very helpful, but there's a little bit of a catch. When there's a lot of insulin in our body, our body is told to not burn fat. So when there's high insulin, there's no fat burning. After this, fasting becomes optional, not mandatory. When glucose is stable, hunger calms down, mood stabilizes, and your body actually wants to burn fat instead of clinging to it for dear life. Carb trick number two, lose weight with dessert, not healthy snacks. What if eating dessert actually makes you burn more fat than eating a healthy snack? Jesse explains that the timing of your sugar intake is more important than the sugar itself. Pick dessert over a sweet snack. Love this one. Whenever we want to eat sugar in something sweet, which is totally fine, again, it's for pleasure purposes, there is a better time and a worse time to eat that sugar for our glucose levels. The worst time you can eat sugar for your glucose levels is first thing in the morning on an empty stomach, or between meals on an empty stomach. Why the empty stomach thing? Well, because when your stomach is empty, anything you eat is gonna go through your system really, really quickly and make its way to your bloodstream really, really quickly. So let's say you love chocolate cake, like me. If I had chocolate cake first thing in the morning, that would make a massive glucose spike. And then with that glucose spike would then come a crash, that crash, activates the craving center in our brain and tells us to eat more sugar. So if I have sugar first thing in the morning on an empty stomach, I can be pretty sure that I'm gonna spend the whole day with crazy sugar cravings. And who wants crazy sugar cravings for the whole day? Uh, like nobody, so don't do that. Instead, when you wanna eat sugar, eat it as dessert after a meal. So if I see a really good looking cookie I'll buy it and then I'll eat it after my next meal. That way, the food from the meal that is already in your stomach is going to slow down how quickly the sugar from the sweet thing you're eating, the cookie or the chocolate cake, how quickly that sugar is gonna arrive into your bloodstream. Therefore, you get all the pleasure from the sugar with less impact on your glucose levels. So the rule is simple. If you're going to eat sugar, eat dessert, not snacks. Are you more of a dessert person or a snacker? Tell us below and we will share Glucose Goddess' favorite healthy dessert in the replies. Carb trick number three, move specific muscles after you eat. How can 10 minutes of lazy movement after a carb-heavy meal win over hardcore fasting for fat burning? Imagine you're at your desk, you're at work, you're at school, wherever, you've eaten something really high in carbs. Here is the easiest and most discreet way you can lower the glucose spike of that meal. You will simply put your feet on the ground like this, and then just go up and down. Try to keep your shoes on. You go up and down like this, okay? Four, five, 10 minutes. Now, why is this helpful? Because your calves, my dears, contain a muscle called the soleus muscle. The soleus muscle has been shown in studies to be extra good at soaking up glucose in the bloodstream after we eat. But we should know that even doing 10 minutes can have a strong impact. This is my own test, so pain au chocolat versus pain au chocolat and then 10 minutes of calf raises. As you can see, much smaller glucose spike and it's very discreet, it's very, very easy. So I recommend you test this out. This was my first example of an easy exercise you can do throughout the day to reduce your spikes. You wanna do this within like 90 minutes of the end of eating your meal because 90 minutes is about when your glucose levels will peak after eating. You don't have to change what you ate at that meal, just what you do after it. Carb trick number four, the best fat burn snack. 
What single change can stop your afternoon sugar cravings, even if you've struggled with snacking for years? Jesse's answer, always go savory when snacking. If you want to snack, go savory. We really want to avoid eating sugar between meals because that's going to kick off a glucose roller coaster. So if you're really hungry between meals, have something savory. Maybe have a soft boiled egg with some delicious sea salt on it. Maybe have a Greek yogurt with some unsweetened peanut butter in it. Maybe you can have some cheese on toast. Think about something savory that you enjoy and have that as a snack. And always keep sugar for after a meal if you can. When you snack on sweet foods, fruit, bars, smoothies, dried fruit, healthy cookies, you spike glucose again and restart cravings. But savory snacks, eggs, nuts, cheese, Greek yogurt with peanut butter, keep glucose stable, insulin low, and signal the body. Burn fat, not sugar. This single change reduces hunger, kills cravings, and stabilizes energy for hours. Carb trick number five, the liquid shield for weight loss. Is there really a cheap liquid you can drink before a carb-heavy meal that cuts your glucose and insulin spike by up to 30%. Glucose Goddess points to a surprisingly powerful science-backed tool. Ooh, the vinegar hack. <laughs> so when I first discovered the science, I was quite surprised and taken aback. I thought, okay, this is maybe another just social media weird fad thing. But actually there's some really good clinical trials showing us that one tablespoon of vinegar in a tall glass of water before a meal can reduce the glucose spike of that meal by up to 30% without needing to change what you're eating during the meal, just by adding the vinegar drink. So try this before a meal that contains carbs, starches or sugars. And the way this works is because vinegar contains acetic acid. And acetic acid is a very cool molecule that slows down the breakdown of carbs in our digestive system. So again, slowing down how quickly carbs are gonna go from our mouth to our bloodstream. That is the whole point. That's the whole thing we're trying to do here. Reduce the amount of glucose we're giving to our body and reduce how quickly that glucose is arriving in our bloodstream with all the hacks. Now, any type of vinegar works. Um, the most popular ones being apple cider vinegar, white wine vinegar, uh, you can also do rice vinegar, cherry vinegar, whatever you want. Skip the vinegar gummies and this specific type of vinegar. Many are loaded with sugar and undo the benefit. The only one I would recommend you avoid is the very syrupy balsamic glaze, the sort of Italian aged one because that one has quite a bit of sugar in it. So it might negate the positive effects. A question I often get is if I don't want to drink the vinegar, what can I do? Well, you can use it as dressing on your veggie starter, for example, that's a great combination, two hacks in one. Um, but be very careful with the capsules and the gummies. I've done a lot of research over the past few years on these because you guys have all asked me for a capsule uh, to take instead of drinking the vinegar. Unfortunately, the gummies and the supplements, the vinegar supplements, at best, they're not very effective or have very little science supporting them. And at worst, they're actually full of sugar and are gonna create a glucose spike. I'm looking at you, the vinegar gummy product full of sugar. Bonus carb hack, all sugars are the same. Stop being tricked. What if the healthy sugar you're buying is no healthier than the cheapest table sugar on the shelf? Most people fall for marketing, but Jesse destroys this myth instantly. Have any type of sugar you like, they're all the same. What do I mean by this? I mean that I do not want you to believe all the crazy marketing and stuff around organic sugar, brown sugar, maple syrup, agave syrup, honey, etc. All of these things, whether you're looking at some simple white table sugar to a really fancy honey, they all contain sugar. They all contain glucose and fructose molecules, and they're all gonna make a glucose spike when you have them. So pick the one that you like. Honey is not necessarily better for you than table sugar. Agave syrup is not necessarily better for you than organic, unbleached brown sugar. Just eat the sugar that you like because when you're having sugar, it's a pleasure decision. It's not a health decision. It's purely for pleasure. So even if you're having some organic, whatever, honey-based cake, 
Don't think that you're doing that for your health. That's for pleasure. If you're over 50 and serious about fat loss, you need to watch as weight loss guru, Dr. Mindy Pell shows her favorite five foods that burn body fat faster than Ozempic. 